Um, I was there. <laughs> Unfortunately, I was there for the uh, the end of it. Um, but uh, yeah, I was uh, I was kind of the tail end right there. Um, actually, this uh, this state had a lot to do with the end of the uh, Legion boom coming coming to a close. Yeah, Arizona Stadium had a lot had a lot to do. A lot of, a lot of bodies left out on the floor there and uh, up there in Glendale. Anyway, I think probably know asking. Jed said yesterday that body type wise. The, Arizona is striving to build something like that in its secondary with these taller cornerbacks. You mentioned trading to two as an uh, offensive coordinator. What challenges does that pose when you've got those? Yeah, when you've got length at corner and you got size in the secondary, uh, it's it's tough to just you know take those goal balls you know lightly. Um, you got to understand that the, these guys can not only press coverage but they can run. Um, Stooks, Bobo, um, Feezy. Um, Maybe miss anybody else. That's a, those are the long guys um, that are getting a bunch of uh, reps there. Um, but a uh, great group of kids. Uh, those guys are competing like crazy, and th the development is really cool to see. Um, you know, there were kids that just, you know, I am, uh, in Bobo's case, he was just, uh, you know, like a like a fresh fresh deer out there. You know, when he first got here, but now he's he's got great balance. He's got great composure. Um, and uh, he's learned to use his hands, learned to use his tricks, and he's going to come down with a couple of those last week. I thought he was, I thought he was going to get two, um, but he did a great job. John, John, what did you think of the two young cornerbacks this past week? Uh, I thought they played really well. You know, um, uh, there was really nothing, you know, going on because they, like he said, the size and the speed and experience, you know, they're really starting to show off, you know, from last year. Uh, so I was happy to see those guys compete. They communicate very well. You know, they're, they're comfortable with the system. And Jay Rich has done a great job bringing those guys along. Uh, Johnny, what do you make of uh, Jacob Lani and Justin Flo leading the conference in tackles? And what does the defensive line do in order for them? To get uh, I think when you lead the conference in tackles, it tells you how big you are up front because you're eating up a lot of double teams and things like that. But I think overall, they just better understanding of their fits and what the run fits are supposed to be. Um, but the D line has a lot to do with it. You know, you got big nose guards that are eating up two blocks and, you know, you know, big no uh, three techniques that are eating up double teams, you know, so those guys should be making plays. Kind of going off of that, comparing the run defense to last year, going into conference play compared to this year, what are some of the biggest differences to you up front there? Year two, you know, uh, they're used to the system now. They understand the defense, understand alignments has a lot to do with it. Um, I think they're comfortable with that, uh, you know, and, and that's what it is, you know, just the consistency in the coaching is helping, you know, um, you know, it's, you know, I, like I said, you know, it's great to have a great staff, you know, that's been together. When you look at great defenses in this conference, you look at Utah, their staff has been together forever on defense. You look at Oregon State, their staff has been together for forever. So, you know, the consistency in coaching and in the scheme and things like that is really starting to show up. Lastly, Kay Brown got into the game last time out. What, what did you see from him and what did you like out there? It was just good to see him play, get some reps, some live reps, you know, game reps. We're going to need them. You know, it's a long season, so it was good to see. You know, it wasn't perfect, but he learned from it, and um, he's going to be a, a great player for us. Uh, Johnny, uh, you've used maybe 10, 11 guys on the, the defensive line, and I know that's something you want to do. But is there a time where you eventually want to pare it down to the best seven or eight because they're the, the most effective? Uh, it depends on the offense we're facing. You know, in the last game, uh, they were in multiple different uh, personnel, so we had to put more D linemen in the game. But yeah, yeah, it all depends on who we play. I mean, are you concerned that as while they are being fresh, that um, if they're not out there enough, that could hurt them? Or is that just not No, enough? no, no, no. You know, it, for example, like Upshot played 47 snaps. In my eyes, those are a lot of snaps. To, for him to be very productive rushing the passers, we got to limit those. So that's why we play so many guys. But when we get down in the red zone, we're having our best D line in there. Uh, two questions for Brennan. Brennan, just uh, what did you like about the way that Leif Magnuson played when he was inserted in there to that, uh, that right guard position? And then the two third downs that Jade made, uh, the one where he kind of scrambled and spun to find Tanner for first down, and the one where he flipped the ball to Michael at the other end. Uh, what did you just like about the way he operated those two? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do that backwards. Uh, so 
Uh, Jaden's uh, ability to use his feet and create plays is uh, is pretty special. Um, and uh, when he get that get get those opportunities to get out there and um, and really stress the defense out, I mean, good things can happen. Bad things could happen too. So I thought he had a great uh, mind uh, for the game and understanding what we wanted to get done. Um, and he was—he took chances, but he took smart chances. He took chances in, the, in places where um, it was safe to do so, um, and he wasn't putting the ball in jeopardy, um, which obviously led to you know a better performance by him. Uh, so we'll obviously keep encouraging and, and keep coaching and, and keep working with him just to make sure he can continue to do those things because he's been special when he does them. Um, and then Leif, uh, he did uh, he did an admirable job, man. He came out and um, he gave us our physical presence up front, um, you know, created movement, uh, you know, uh, on the offensive side of the ball to get those defensive linemen move back to create bigger holes for the running backs. Um, he did a, he did a really good job in his first, you know, real action since, I don't know, probably two years ago. So um, I, I was happy to get him in there. Brennan, uh, um, what is it going to take after having three games of not really being able to be out there, or three weeks, uh, Raymond to be able to be game ready to play? I know he practiced this past week, but it was red jersey and all that. Is, is one full week of being fully contact enough, you think, to get in? Yeah, I think the uh, the contact adaptation piece will take about a week. Um, so we'll get two good padded practices on Tuesday and then on Wednesday. And then Thursday we'll be in uh, we'll be in spiders, but we'll still be moving around. So he'll, there'll be plenty of time for guys to get ready to go. So I think it shouldn't be an issue. We, uh, I think we, we saw you sitting with him before the game on the, on the bench when he was in shorts. It kind of looked like... Man, I really wish this had been my my time. Uh, I mean, was it hard to? Oh, what a moment! Yeah. Well, I mean, is is it hard to, when you have a guy like that who who was so expectant of this? He has this weird thing pop up, but then gets back to practice and thought maybe he had a shot. Uh, yeah, it's always a tough situation when uh, you know guys want to get out there and play um, and they're unable. Uh, he he's done everything we've asked him to do. Um, we've, we've done a uh, really good job with Kevin and our staff of just making sure that we're doing this the right way, making sure he's 100% healthy before we put him on the field. Um, and he's been all cleared. So it should just be normal. We can practice back to ball, you know. Uh, we'll back at it. Uh, Johnny, what has been the biggest improvement in defense in three games? Uh, just understanding the defense, understanding and really trusting their, the way we prepare them. Uh, it's really been showing the communication has been outstanding. You know, you, if you watch it from, you know, you watch the game, you see how well we communicate up front in the back end. And I think that's the biggest difference that you see in, you know, in this year's defense compared to last year. Michael and Dave. One for you, Brennan. Was the switch that you made uh, on the offensive line something that you planned to do before the game, or was that because things were a little shit? Yeah, no, it was, it was pre-planned. Um, uh, Joe went in there. Uh, we knew he was going to get the first two series and then uh, have Jonah play guard. And then after that, we're going to put Leif in at guard and put Jonah at tackle. Um, it was for multiple reasons, really, to get all three of those guys different different reps. One, get Leif uh, meaningful reps uh, in the game, Borjan meaningful reps, and then to get uh, Jonah meaningful reps at guard and tackle. And uh, for Johnny, um, Dalton Johnson, you sent him on a blitz a couple times and he got pressure. Both times, what makes him effective in that role? Um, smart. His football IQ is unbelievable. Uh, understanding exactly, you know, what we're looking for in order to blitz him. Um, you know, those things. Uh, you gotta have, you gotta have experienced guys to be able to recognize formations and when when to blitz and how to blitz. And I think he has a great feel for it. You know, uh, it's been really helpful having him on the field. And I was glad to see him play. You know, I didn't think he was gonna be able to play, but he's a tough kid and the kid. You know, he. He's a winner. He comes from a great program, high school program. He's got great attitude about, you know, about the game and about his teammates, and I'm just happy for him. Uh, last question, Dave. Uh, John, for you, uh, Russell Davis had a play late in the game where he kind of sprinted back into coverage from the defensive end position, deflected a pass. It was almost like the, the excitement that he had in that moment was like, this is what they taught me, and it worked. When you see young players like that realize – Hey, this is how we were supposed to do it. You did it right. How does that make you feel as a coach, just to kind of see when they, when they have that realization that, oh, this is what I was taught, and this is how this came out? I think you know, like I said, you know, it's how we prepare. You know, um, he made the same mistake at practice in our two-minute deal, where he's supposed to cut underneath one, and he went straight back. So to see that happen, 
and how Coach Kofusi is really bringing those guys along and all our young guys, you know what I mean? And just to see that happen, you know, you may, you're proud as a coach because, you you know, you're getting across the point to the guys and, you know, and it's a young defense, to be honest with you, when you really look at it. So to have those guys execute those assignments at the highest level, man, it's awesome to see. Appreciate you. Thank guys. you.